Hey guys, so uh, this is where I'm putting my RAM mount, alright, uh, similar to Steve D5, and uh, I didn't use any screws. What I did was I simply used this RAM mount with the suction cup back here, which has a metal plate here, and then there's a pin that goes through that you just push out with a screwdriver. Uh, and then, as you see, this is actually locked on. What I did is I trimmed the notches here and here that where this pin spins down and tightens up. Actually, for the stock one, it makes the suction cup work. And uh, you can see the pin inside. So I pushed the pin out, took it apart, trimmed those so that I could get this back on here, like so, hard to do with one hand, and then just use the locking mechanism, one second, the locking mechanism itself to pinch the rubber with the metal plate on the back and as you can see that ain't going anywhere alright it's tighter than <laughs> so no screws required and the beauty of that is you can pop this off when you want to for whatever reason uh, of course the back is gonna fall inside uh, unless you remove this from the spider but if you ever needed to remove this, put the gauge back. No screws, no holes, no nothing, and it's solid. So nice way to put a RAM mount, and I'll show my GPS and compass once I get that all mounted. Also, I put my 12-volt outlet in. That's to run the GPS, all right? And it's a Radio Shack model. Um, I mean, it's got a wa waterproof cap on it, and it's 12-volt. It's not a USB. I've got the USB adapters if I want one, but my GPS because it uses traffic I have to have the cigarette lighter because there's a box in the harness that picks up the FM signal for the traffic so I went with a 12 volt but I mounted it where everybody else has it was fairly easy I drilled a bunch of holes then snipped out a bigger hole and just took a Dremel with a barrel sander on it and slowly enlarged it until it fit and locked in place alright so there's my 12 volt outlet Now, I hook up the GPS to the audio system, uh, which is the way BRP does it, except they supply a cable and everything. It is mounted right under here is a connector. And if you obviously, if you don't have the harness, then you're going to have this dead plug keeping it watertight with these rubber plugs in it. Now, this will give me a plug to make uh, the harness that will run up to my GPS. Now, one thing about the pins. These are standard power supply pins. You can get them at any electronics store. Don't ask me the part number, I'm sorry. But they've got a little leaf spring for locking, and these work perfectly in that connector. We need, if we're going to run power, which I'm not, you need a total of five wires. You need, uh, for the earphone jack, you need ground, inner ring, outer ring, or left and right, which, by the way, even though it's mono, uh, I'm going to hook up one or the other and see if sound comes out of one speaker or the other. We'll find out for sure if this connector supports stereo in. All right, I'll let you know that. And then the other two would be for the power connections. Now, the drawing is online for this connector that tells you what pins what. So I'm going to use that. Uh, maybe in this video I'll post it up. It was given to me, sent to me by someone on Spider Lovers. Thank you very much. And that's going to tell me how to wire my GPS audio, which is all I want to run from here up to the dash where my GPS will be. Alright, so we're going to get busy on that, do some testing, and uh, we'll come back and uh, take a look. Okay, so I've got a temporary hookup, the wire's in the connector, exactly like the drawing said, only need three. I've temporarily got it hooked up, I, don't worry, I'll clean all that up and solder it and it'll be nice. Uh, and I've got the GPS simulating a route, the stereo plan. Turn right on Chapman Avenue. See, it said turn right on Chapman Avenue. It interrupts the radio and tells you where to go. Now, of course, if you don't want to hear it or you want to hear the GPS speaker, you just unplug this audio jack. All right, so when I get my GPS mounted up here, uh, I'll have this jack run in a... Continue 1.7 miles, then turn left on Valley View Street. Okay, so then I wanted to see if this was stereo input or mono, so I'm going to test that right now. We'll come back. Okay, so... Uh, I disconnected the one of the left and right sides, so I'll only have ground and tip. 
And if you listen. In 1.1 miles, turn left on Valley View Street. So it appears that this is a mono input to the radio because if it was stereo, I know the GPS doesn't put out stereo, or maybe it does, but if, um, if uh, uh, one side is unhooked and it was a stereo input, then we'd only hear the sound out of left or right. Right, and I'm hearing it out of both. So bottom line is it's a mono input. For those ever wondering, we know now. So it doesn't matter whether you got left or right hooked up. Uh, it comes out of a one speaker, uh, both speakers, not a left or a right. So that makes me assume for sure that this is probably a mono input. All right, so you could even get by only hooking up two wires, ground and one of the inputs. Turn left on Valley View Street. Anyway. So now I've got this. I'm going to get the harness wired and we're going to finish up. Okay, and there is my GPS. Um, RAM mount, as I said. Let me loosen it up here. As I said, RAM mount. This, no screws. I just did that modification. Snaps on, solid, right? RAM mount. And then I'll explain my cord here in a minute. Someone might go, what the heck? Anyway. Uh, as you can see, I can put it anywhere I want, tighten it up, and it ain't going anywhere. All right, so I can move it out a little bit or in. So the next thing is uh, I don't use a GPS all the time, and I'm going to show you something else that I'm going to use this uh, RAM mount for, but the audio cord, which I ran down through here, down through here, through the speaker, across, da down through here, here it is here, down and along where the regular cord would go. All right, it's pretty simple. By the way, getting the wire across here without taking all this off, just take a wooden dowel. You'll see light from the speaker grill. Wooden dowel, stick it through, tape on the wire, pull the wooden dowel through, you just ran your cable through. And I don't have it running under here. I have it running underneath where the switch harness is. It's not up in here where it can get uh, chafed or rubbed on. So it was down the speaker grill, across and out. All right, so that's kind of that. Now let me show you the trick about my wire. What I did is I, I just trimmed a little notch over here in the corner. So now I can tuck this wire in if it's not being used. And uh, go ahead, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand again. And just use this to hold it. The safety card. Bingo. Hidden cord. Now, if I don't want to use the GPS, uh, and which I'm going to go get my other accessory I bought, so I don't use a GPS for around town and stuff like that. Don't need it. Long trips need it. So that's when it will be perfect right here. Gets a little bit of shade from the hood, and it just kind of goes in with the dash, as you can see. By the way, this is a 775T. Not only does it have the audio into the radio now that I hooked up the cable, but this is a model, the T, that can also talk to Bluetooth headsets on my helmet. All right, so if I don't want to use the audio cord and don't want to hear the speakers, or if I've got my Bluetooth bound to my SM10, or I can bind my Bluetooth helmet to the GPS, because this is one of the few, just like the uh, Zumo uh, series, that will bind to a helmet, not just a phone. Okay, didn't want to dwell on that. But anyway, that's my mounting. I've got an option to plug in to the radio, which does interrupt the radio, or I can go Bluetooth. Uh, to my helmet, which the GPS will also interrupt the SM10 for audio. All right, so that is my mount system. Let me go get my other goodie for when I'm not using a GPS. And there we have it. Got this idea from Steve D5 out here, a uh, spider lover that lives out here in this area. Anyway, I saw this, I'm going, hmm, interesting. So when I'm around town and I'm not using the GPS, I got a drink holder if I want it. And if I don't want it, I just remove the whole dang thing. And all I'll have is a RAM ball on the dash here. So there you go. Swivel cup. Oop, didn't tighten that enough. But anyway, that is the idea. So I can go GPS or cup holder anytime I want. Yeah, getting a little late in the afternoon, but I thought I'd show you how I wired the... Uh, 12 volt jack. By the way, popping these speaker panels off is easy. I just grab this corner right here and undo that first snap and then they all just kind of snap out. Alright, so my 12 volt, what I did is I made the wire loop into the base. There's a bottom 
edge here down here. Bottom of the pan, I guess is a box. Seems like it's all sealed. So I just made sure the wires were long enough and came down and ran along there. What's interesting is the inline fuse holder fit right in this notch and the speaker grill holds it from flopping around. But the red and black I tie wrapped together so they stayed together. What you don't want is for it to be dragging across the speaker and chafing on it, possibly cutting it. It is power, right? And then basically I just ran that up over to the fuse block. But I thought I'd show you that pretty simple uh, way to go there. All right, snapping it back in. I'm not going to show. It's just it's a little harder to snap back in, believe it or not. But uh, anyway, that's just the wiring for the 12 I did for that socket. So check this out. This is something cool about this GPS. I've got three ways in which I can listen to it if I like. One is the hidden cord that I showed, which will come through the radio and the speakers, and if my SM10 is on, my Bluetooth helmet. I can also Bluetooth to the 775T directly with my helmet. The next one I found is in here, this has a FM transmitter, really low signal. So you find a station that... Turn right uh, on Chapman Avenue. There you just heard the GPS. You turn it on a station has nothing on it. You tell the GPS what station to broadcast on. Comes through your radio. So then, if you don't want this thing interrupting your music, um, and you just want it on, and maybe when you get close to your destination, Continue all you got to continue one point seven miles. Then turn left on Valley View Street. Anyway, then uh, you can just jump to your channel. So I'm, I set this dead channel from the GPS. Wasn't hard. So now I can go to music, or I can go to the GPS channel. So that's a way to squelch a GPS that does FM transmitting anyway. <laughs> to squelch a GPS uh, from interrupting your music and hearing it only when you want to. Very cool. Anyway, another tip there. I don't know if the Zumos do this. If they do, that seems like it's working pretty good to me. Anyway, just another tip, and I'm just going to close with, here's my GPS install. Got it plugged into 12 volts, so I'm getting traffic. And uh, I hope this was helpful, and enjoy.